And this is the convergence form of the international intercommunalist convergence formation that is a united front of all various uh, revolutionary tendencies which are serious about the social revolution in the imperial center and in the third world. We're third worldists, but we don't um, give up on these social revolution in the imperial center as well, either here in Canada, in Quebec, United States of America, the uh, not so great Britain over there, and uh, in the uh, state of Tennessee where Andrew is. Hello, Andrew. I didn't okay. even say in the Republic of Ireland. And the Republic of Ireland, too, is up for a revolution. Yep. It well, has not, not finished its job yet. It's got it's work It's not to even do. a real republic. It's basically Britain's little bitch, the Irish Free State. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. It calls itself yeah, we free. Don't I guess it, it wants republic to be free. In the but republic it's not. Movement. Because the Republic was socialist. They betrayed the Republic. The Free State is not really the Republic to us. It's, it's yeah. a, a British betrayal. So it was called officially from time to time. I mean, it's its official name, the Republic. You know, the Free State calls itself a Republic, but like the, the Irish Republican, the Irish Socialist Republican movement um, doesn't see it as socialist. Uh, we sorry, not so, so sorry. Doesn't see it as a republic. We see it as what it was, which was a British colony. It was a neo colony. It was the first ever member to join the British Commonwealth, the, the one hmm. that we've got now, because it was yeah. started in 1926. Everyone thinks the British Commonwealth was started in 1957. We've even seen it spray painted on a wall. The 50s, the Commonwealth, and I'm like, it was invented in the 20s. You... <laughs> the British have lied to everyone, and everyone's believed it. Hook, line, and sinker. Yeah, you know the 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 uh, the uh, ideology of the state is mythology. That's the essence of the of state. You know, rationality. It's myths. They even sort of codify it in the in in the academic theory, the political theory of uh, of the of the building of a nation state. You know, uh, ASEN. It's called A S E N. Is a uh, sort of you know this uh, political club in uh, at the University of London there, even SOAS. And I went to a conference of theirs, you know, and there was not one Arabic person, you know. So and it was supposed to be an international conference. And so I had to speak for the Palestinians there. And they had not heard, you know, anything, you know, other than the Zionist line there. It's pathetic. Uh, you know, the whole thing is based upon this, one myth upon another. But we have a new development this week. We've been... Uh... We're dealing with the joys of um, splitters that actually accuse like myself of being some sort of splitter, even though I've been sat right here and working hard with the convergence. Well, they don't seem to want to do anything with us. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, we should supersede you. But we've got Nicole and Jordan dreaming about being the dear leaders of the convergence or whatever, like, uh, you know, revisionist mindset towards power they have over this thing as if your position is meant to be one of power and not one of combining the power of us as a, as a you know a communal force it's the whole point of organizing the leader helps direct what already exists as a part of their leadership they don't rule that's a ruler in like that's the kind of mindset oh, that you pray to us. a ruler oh yes i know what that is oh yes i remember ruler yeah yeah that's like a monarch isn't it it's like a king or queen yeah i get it okay <laughs> It's not last nice anymore, but you, I remember my dad actually got uh, in trouble because he called Prince Charles big ears while we're on the way. Well, he's King Charles now, but it was like 12. And uh, we're walking down to go to see him come to the town. And uh, he calls him, actually, I was younger than 12, but anyway, he calls him big ears. And as soon as he just comes launching out of the bush, to give a gun and fly into a rest of on grounds of like attacks against the king. <laughs> like, we couldn't even see the soldier. He only leaped out, got my dad a heart attack, and then <laughs> uh, we got to go up and go see go see some of the, it's the you know the UK is not as brutal about respect your king as they used to be, but they still are. Uh, you just gotta be caught mm. in the right situation at the right time. Okay, but, Taro, what I will say, you, but your your audio is is something. There's something wrong with your audio. You know, it's like there's an echo or something sort of a, it's impeding it. You know, the, there's no clarity. I'm sorry, wait a second. Is, is it smoke here first? Is it is it is it better now? No, it's still broken up, like it's it's cracked up. Your audio is not clear. 
Okay, let's take care of that first. Okay, okay. While you're doing that, um, I could uh, proceed with the um, the share screen of the uh, of the proposition that I floated this week, and uh, I've got it right here and ready to share. Okay, now okay. am I working now? No. No, I sort of hear you. What do you mean? What? I've literally like changed all everything. It should be okay, fine. Okay, that sounds better. That sounds better. Uh, uh, okay, I, I did nothing. But, but I fixed. You. Um, what's it? It's still it's so, still not you know as good as it should be. You know, like I I want you to be able to be heard. Oh no, that's worse. Well, one sec. I don't know what to do to fix it. Then, um, one second. I gotta get up my set. There's no bass on it. You know, it's like all treble or something. Yeah, one sec. This because the mic is bad. Sound. Um. Oh wait, I see. My volume for my mic is turned up. Um. How is it now? Is it better now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there we go. I'm so sorry about that. The fucking Windows auto adjusting my volume. Can I finish what I was saying now? But can um, you guys hear go me? Go right too? ahead. Yeah. Yeah, you're clear, Andrew. Uh, what's it? So, um, fucking. So I've been getting like, I mean, you have as well. We've been getting slandered and attacked by these people whilst letting them, you know, remain in the org, trying keeping them around, inviting them to things, trying to start active discussion about issues that they won't talk about whilst calling me the unwilling one to engage and just attacking constantly. And then whenever I respond or to deal with it, I'm treated as the vitriolic one. Well, now they're going off and they're making their new revolutionary formation. These are people who won't turn up to protests. They won't get involved yeah. in the organized struggle that a lot of us are trying to do in the Convergence and the United Panther movement and stuff like that. Don't want any involvement with it. The only black block comrade that fucking Nicole had in her area no longer wants to speak to her. After they were tokenized to me, they were tokenized to make Nicole look more radical, more revolutionary. Mm. I'm not gonna more, name right? any names. Mask. If if Nicole wants to look more revolutionary, she's got to mask up and go to protests. They're like, no, I can't go to protests. I'll lose my job. I don't know if she knows this. Most Palestinian protests are organized by unions at the risk of their jobs. So mask up like they tell you to and fucking go. Like it's not an excuse. That, oh, I'm gonna use my job. Do you know what? I don't fucking have a job. If I get in trouble with the government and they want to take my fucking money away, I ain't got another job to go get. I am mm. fucked. So mm. I am taking a massive risk. We all should take a massive risk. Palestinian mm. people are losing their jobs by a bombing. And what, these people are going to start a revolutionary formation? Nada. And they're mm. calling my fucking Chicano brethren, my brown comrades, white. Whitewashing mm. colonized people. Whitewashing mm. the Black Panthers that I fucking mm. work with. Like, are these all white people to them? Uh, the fucking trans comrades I work with, are these all cis white males to them? Like, mm -hmm. the reductiveness, the attacks, the, the attempts to gaslight, these people are unserious and really absolute jokes. Yeah. Their space is online. Of, uh, a loss of talent, you know, a loss of talented, you know, like people. And Nicole in particular, you know, I think was, uh, you know, in, in dialoguing with you in a, in a, in a rational way. In a friendly way. Oh, no, that was, was that, no, 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 that was dirty. Did you, you know, in the video, you know what they were like going on? Oh, they're getting into magic now, which is not true. I've been into my pagan culture for a while now. They're making out as if it's come out of nowhere. And they were gaslighting me, trying to say, oh, is this like Jeff guy? No, Jeff's someone who was abused by Comrade Nat. He was massively abused. He was picked up at 15. He was groomed and he became a strasserist. He is no longer a strasserist. I have been a Nazi in my time and we're still sat here as comrades because people can improve. But they're bringing up his history of him being a strasserist, of him being caught in Nets transcendentalism and using it to implicate on me. I should be able to talk to people who are traumatized. Actually, I have been the, uh, I mean, UPM's under some shifts at the moment, but I've been the secretary of human rights for the UPM since I think April and, um, or May, it might be May actually. Uh, and, you know, I did an investigation involving a sexual assault issue. Do you know what I had to do? Even though I already adamantly believed the person engaged I needed to see how they would handle it, go to the fucking perpetrator and ask for what they're going to say. Because I need to investigate. I have hmm. to investigate claims. 
They're making claims about me when they've never spoken to me. They're listening to net spin webs and spin lies. There is no investigation, yeah. no right to speak. Hmm. And so in a situation like this, it's slander. It's hmm. slander. It's vitriol. I have a quote for that actually in a moment. But what we're looking at is we're, uh, what, what happened there with that respectful conversation was they basically tipped me up and, and like pushed me off from even being able to have a polite verbal call and talk. That never happened. And um, they were they were basically looking for shit that they could get as ammunition, being facetious. They were like, oh, I'm not saying that they're implying sexuality by grooming, but it's interesting that groomer is mostly used around sexuality. That's a modern thing. Groomer is associated with grooming someone. You know, it, it can be the literal, like doing someone's hair, or as we mean in this case, manipulating people, getting in their head, abusing people. Now, these people want to side with abusers want to defend abusers and then make any excuse for it oh it's their mental health i got mental health problems and i've lost people because i'm an abuser and i deserved to lose them when i was abusive i've had to learn grow and get past that if you can't accept when you've been an abusive piece of shit because i grew up with abuse and there's a cycle and it can happen hmm. you're never going to learn from it and you'll keep making those mistakes and destroying everyone around you until you have no one left hmm. um these people What's keep trying to find any chance to attack me. Luke Dublin right now is trying to rebuild bridges. He said to me he wanted to square everything away and just be done with this. And then this is how they're acting. The moment he said that to me, the same night, they start attacking me. Start making if fun of me. It's my fault that Jason feels this way. They have not publicly attacked Jason. If they want me to, if they want me to bring that kind of reactionary Jason can fucking be, I can do that. I have taken it nice on Jason. I have taken it nice on him because I still have some finkle of misplaced respect for him. But if they want to press my fucking buttons, they can go. Because these people are going on about receipts and all that, yet they got to wait until they can fucking manipulate me to get something out of me. These people are not revolutionaries. They I know how that evil. goes, exactly how that goes, because if I can be completely honest, the other day, my stepdad said, fuck every Jew who ever lived and that he wants to kill every single Jew. Mm -hmm. Something to those Am I allowed to say that? What did he say? What did you say? Well, I want to I wanna kill your stepdad. Oh, I, look, no, I, I charged at him because he kept provoking me. And he, he just, he just wouldn't leave me alone until he called the cops because I charged at him. And they wanted to take me to the hospital, but I signed a refusal note. Mm -hmm. And I went to a psychiatric hospital for two days. Mm. Wow, but, this is quite an experience. That happened this week? Yeah, just two, three or four days ago. Wow. And then yeah. you had your revenge on him, though, because you took it out on his, uh, on his uh, truck, right? Yeah, I carved the Star of David, and I wrote, Jew Boy about that. Yeah, you wrote, uh, a Jew boy was here. Yes, I love that. But, you know, it's like, uh, they would, uh, of course, he would take revenge on you. You know, I, that's why I asked you if he had killed you, you know, because you, you're you threatening to kill you. You know, this is like wartime you have there. You need to get out of here. He, he, he wants me to go to jail. And uh -huh. I'm going to jail when I need to. Because uh -huh. I know that when he tries putting me in jail for vandalism, I'm putting him in jail for attempted murder because he literally uh, tried shooting me not nine months ago. Wow. About all the abuse, going about the years of it. Like, this is really a stepfather. Up what he is. This is a stepfather, Kara. This is how he yeah, gets treated. Yeah, but the stepfather isn't, he's been around for a little bit. There's, there's a, a plethora of things he's done. So, like, get all yeah. of the stuff he's done yeah. and nail him for it because he's yeah. a piece of shit and he deserves to go away. I um, told the cops what he did. Yes. And what did they say? Nothing? They said that since he did that, I did not need to go to jail. Oh, well, at least. Yeah. 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 They will because it's, provi it's provocated. And a provocation puts the blame onto him again. It goes back to him. It's his own yeah. problem then. And the police. And I'm not going to fight with him anymore. I'm just putting it aside. And Seeing that when I go back to Michigan, he doesn't come with us. Yeah. Really. To where I was born. Maybe I'll move somewhere like hopefully Russia or Belarus, you know? 
Hmm. Let's see now, where could you go? What place could you go these days, you know, to be in political exile? Oh, boy. Cuba. Algeria. I'd Cuba. like to go to Cuba. 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 Yeah, that could do. Socialist state. Yeah. Yeah, you could get there Canada. through uh, Canada. Just need to uh, get a bus ride to uh, Montreal here. Hang out with me for a <laughs> yeah. while and then get a ticket to go to Cuba. Yeah. And then contact the Cuban different. consulate. Yeah. And uh, apply for and a political there, exile as a refugee. Political no refugee. And then from no there, Spanish. I learned Spanish. Yeah. You... But What's that? I was. Um... What's that? Andrew, have, um... What did you say, Andrew? And from there, I can go to Russia from time to time. Well, I mean, I wouldn't want to go to Russia right wouldn't now. Be, but, um, wouldn't be very useful, you know, because you don't know Russian. But you would learn uh, Spanish in Cuba. Now, oh, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Now oh, be you a whole new life before for you. you. Go to, to go to Cuba, you normally need to know Spanish as one of their, like, prerequisites. Unless you actually have, like, a good but enough then... challenge for refugee status. And, like, yeah. they might not. And, then, it, but, like... and you do. You you have a reason. You know, yeah, but by the, time, by the time they're in Canada... They can justify that they're away from that, and they already have like freedom from it in Canada. So they might not. That's the thing. They might no, say, he, "Well, he won't given your circumstances, give him you." No, but I'm saying because he'll be in Canada, he's away from his dad. So making that point will be a lot harder. Uh, things can be really strict for these yes, kind of things. Yeah, yeah. But, but he wouldn't be able to stay in Canada because he wouldn't have more than a three month visa. They even took away the uh, work permits, you know, from visitors. It was just shut down the other day, and my roommate, you know, has to leave for Algeria. But uh, um, I it? have a story too about uh, anti-Semitism that hit me this week. You know, oh. I have a uh, a parking spot that belongs to my apartment here, and I rented out to this guy, you know, who's living in the same building, and he hadn't paid, you know, like the measly fifty bucks, you know, a month that he was supposed to, you know, and I needed it, so I asked him for it, and he sent it to me, but he called my name. Uh, Enculé Juif, which means fucking Jew. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I remember you telling me about that. Yeah. So, you know, like he's living right, you know, beneath me here. So, you know. Start like, stomping when you walk around and stuff. <laughs> so, no, he's, he's in two two levels, you know, below me. And, oh, and so, okay. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, too bad. You know, like, so, um, you know, like. Play loud Jewish music at 2 a.m. in the morning. You know, what am I, what am I supposed to, you know, like, what am I supposed you to do? You know, like. Bluetooth speakers and play uh, some Daniel Kahn outside his door. Um, well, I, I can I do, I can do graffiti on his door. Yes. <laughs> but his, but his girlfriend, you know, You're she's rational. You know? Young Weisfeld. He'll start getting rebellious. <laughs> I got arrested for graffiti. Yeah. One time. In Ottawa, you know, after uh, after the uh, Lytton factory, war factory, which was making guidance system for the cruise missile in oh. Toronto, Canada, for the U.S. cruise oh. missile. And uh, after the factory was blown up and I was in Ottawa, and we had a demonstration and we passed by the front uh, of the uh, Lytton uh, factory's uh, headquarters, you know. So after the demonstration left, you know, uh, I went up to the front window, big window, you know, like window wall type thing. And it wrote, you know, like no cruise in big letters. And the security guard was just on the other side of the window. And there was still spray painting right in front of him. <laughs> middle finger up in one I had to finish it, you know, like I had, you know, the last letter to write, That's you know. Art. You can't get in the way of art like that, you know. Maybe the security <laughs> guard understood and respected that. And he was like, well, let me oh, yeah, the well, work first. <laughs> he ran out and started chasing me down the street, you know. And I ran faster than him and got away. And then the police came after me as well. Yeah. And so I, I did a, a few days in prison for that. Well, Maybe more. Know, when I are forget. you not doing a few days in prison, you fucking like absolute revolutionary, like Jesus Christ. <laughs> I think I think I did a three months for that. Or maybe a month, a month or two, something yeah, like that. Moment. I've been in prison so many times I forget, you know, like how <laughs> long. That's how I am about psychiatric hospitals, to be honest. <laughs> well, you know, so you're in a position to charge that stepfather of yours, you know, with uh, assault. I'm in a position to charge hate uh, propaganda. You can charge him with threat of murder, like actually like death threats. So. Yeah, yeah, you assault. can. Yeah. And uh, 
you know, if, uh, if you can't get away right away, you know, like that's, you know, what you've got to do, you know, to protect yourself because anything can happen. Yeah. Don't want to lose like, you. Don't take risks with abusers, but also be careful of the system because a lot of the time men like this get away with stuff. So you need a strong defense or strong offense, I guess, in this case. But a strong offense is a good defense. Um, but the uh, but there's an it? ally. Oh, I like your 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 tooker. Yeah. Um, wow. But there should be an ally, you know, like somewhere, you know, like a, a legal clinic, you know, for for street people or something like that. Oh, we'll see if mental health have any support groups that could get involved. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You need support. You need to get some backing there. You're too isolated. Because hmm. mm -hmm. on your own, fighting someone like this, you're going to lose. Like, you yeah. really do need backup. Honestly, like, between being home alone, being at home alone with my stepdad, I'd rather just stay isolated, you know? Yeah. Because he always tried fighting with me when my mom was gone. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Well, next time you're. I'm starting uh... to think anti Semitic slurs at me when I found out that my ancestors were Jewish. Uh huh. When did that, him crack how at? did you find out? You what? How, how did, did you find, find out, out that uh, you were from a Jewish family and all that? And this past September. How, how did you find out? What, what did you find out? Oh, I'm sorry. I found out on Ancestry.com. Oh, wow. Huh. And you didn't know and that you I had Jewish family before that? With, uh, the, do what? You didn't know you had Jewish family before that? I heard that it's possible on my grandfather's side, but they didn't quite remember. Uh huh. But and what and does your I, what does your mother know about about this? You know, does your mother consider herself to be Jewish? My mother didn't know anything, but my aunt found out. Uh huh. And that's huh. on my mom's side of the family. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. huh. Oh wow. Well, the guy who, uh, I don't know, you know, like he knew that I would see that. So what did he think that he was going to intimidate me? You know, like they think that they can intimidate us, you know, all these anti-Semites, they think they can intimidate us by, you know, just, uh, you know, some sort of an insult. And they think that we're supposed to cringe and run away or something like that. It's incredible, you know, like what kind of, you know, like attitude that they have towards us. No. Okay, so um, I think I have a moment here which I can do the share now and, and uh, get into the uh, work that I accomplished this week. Yeah, but um, I will say one thing. I do still have more oh, to yes? say on the topic. I was, one, thing, one, one second. Yes, me? okay. Um, Sorry for I about do that. I have more to say on my topic. Well, sure. One second. I'm trying to say okay, something. Okay, yeah, we're waiting for you. No, okay. yeah, no, I'm saying I still had something to say on my topic, but I had to run to the toilet quickly. I'll get back yes. to it when I get back. Um, okay. Okay, so uh, let's see now what you can do, Andrew. Do you have contact with the people the last time from when you were in the hospital? Uh, not currently, because my regular phone on my smartphone isn't working. So what I'm doing is having my mom call the rehab this Monday. Uh huh. Yeah, you should uh, contact them and tell them what's been happening, you know, because uh, you don't know where it's going to be going and you need some backup there. You need some support. You know, they should be uh, getting you out of there, away from that stepfather on your I own. I recently, well, he's, he's not currently here, actually. Good. Uh-huh. Okay, but they should be subsidizing you like with a rent subsidy so you can get, uh, you know, uh, uh, an apartment of your own or they must have, you know, a, uh, um, a, a place where young people can go and live with other young people who are in difficulty, you know, um, a collective house 
that's supervised by medical personnel. They must have such a facility. Well, that's what they have here, but who knows, you know, what the medical conditions are like in that state there. There is but, a good place that I might be going to tonight. Oh. Called uh, the CSU, which uh -huh. is about 30 to 45 minutes away that takes care of people. And yeah. my position is that I'm in for three to five days, and I'm sure I could do that. Uh huh. Only three to five days, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they transport people to other facilities. To so, take my insurance. Yeah. For sure. Take it. Go for that. Yeah. Get away from I'm that uh, stepfather before he comes back. Because he's probably he's planning, you know, something back. to do to you. He's not coming back. Oh, okay. Why? Because he's afraid of being charged by you? Because uh, my mom is not allowing him to. Oh, good. Okay. So your mother is taking care of you. Very good. Okay, she's not intimidated by him. Wonderful. We're, we're much, much better. We're about five states away in about eight months from now. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay, that's better. Much better. Yeah. But I'm and, still living here uh, you know, with a... I always, I always assumed that he seemed like the kind of person who would unironically would have voted for Hitler back in, yeah. say, 1933. But he, he's a liberal, so the... Oh, yeah, yeah. The, so what? <laughs> yeah. You know... The, the old phrase is true. Scratch a liberal and a fascist bleeds. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I still have my local anti-Semite here living, you know, like, not too far away from me. And uh, I guess... Uh, his girlfriend is going to uh, educate him, but, uh, you know, like I've never seen that before, that somebody would actually think of actually writing it down, you know, like they, a lot of, you know, anti-Semitic slurs can be made, you know, verbally. So that's, you know, like sort of normal, but to actually have it written down like that as proof. Wow. I, I, wrote, I wrote Jew boy was here on his truck. Yeah, I saw the picture, you know, nice job. <laughs> Big letters, too. The star of David as well as I could. Yeah. Are you going to send me that picture? I will. <laughs> so, having a bit of bowel trouble, this is the fun of taking laxatives, medication. Okay, so now let's hear more. about this. What is it, the Red Pagan Network or what Red is Pagan it called? Red Pagan Network. So finally, they call me a lumpen proletarian who's been homeless twice by the age of 25. Privileged. Oh, God damn, I'm like privileged compared to colonized people in my They call you privileged? Sure. Yes. Yeah, what is this? What is this personal sort of you know tax you know happening? And they're discussing oh, no, my mean, name as well as being sort of you know thrown out there into the public, into the public domain. You know, the videos aren't even private, you know, they're public domain. You know, why, why are they doing this? You know, like there's a forum that we have, you know, on wire. We know we have our own group, we can talk to each other, you know, like Nicole is there even, you know, but he doesn't answer. You know, what's going on here? You know, like what is this, you know, sabotage? They're trying to sabotage the convergence because it's a good idea, you know, and because they're not the head of it. You know, we don't need I'm a head. You know, like this, I'm not a chairman, chairperson, you, you know, but that's, you know, like I'm, I'm not ordering anybody to do anything, you know, like no big deal. No, you don't give no one no orders. And no, no it, way. You know what it is? It's uh, the manipulator. Net has lost his power and the people who are sticking by him are trying to help him get it back. He, lost really? his he wants back, you, so... but he said he's retiring. He's quitting politics. Oh, you know, what's God. going on then here? Why is he still talking to them all and getting them all to do this stuff? Well, like, that's true. He's been day, quitting politics for like two maybe. years now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's always quitting politics. He's always quitting everything. He's always going underground. He's too revolutionary, but then he's not revolutionary enough at the same time. Guy is a fucking double think enigma. But that's the thing, is that this is all surrounded on defending Comrade Net. But they're trying to shape it around, oh, we're going to follow the direction of Luke. Well, Luke is following the direction of not engaging in slander, and they mm. can't do it. They can't talk about the downfall of Jason. I'm about mentioning me. I didn't slander or even criticize Jason that much publicly. The only time I really slammed him after the breakup occurred was when I made a comment on his video and he fucking shadow banned me. They saw mm. him accusing it of me when he's been getting attacked by right-wingers for ages. I, I don't even think Jason said it. Uh, Jason, Just a comment. 
I don't even just think to, Jason's the one accusing me. Just a it comment. Is, it, and you were Nicole. you were censored for doing a comment? I um criticized basically there's an insinuation that's made in a lot of this stuff where like uh we're from that anarcho syndical boy that was basically like fucking trying to say anyone fucking who's been traumatized by net and calling net an abuser is a liar. And like that's the way it was pushed to be interpreted, especially by Nicole. And when I okay, pointed yeah, out but, these things, but in terms of I procedure, you know, like just for a comment that you had written on the public video that was made, just for that it comment, you were that. censored. Yes, um, I went into detail. I went to massive detail into like why he needs this to be is, careful with these things. I explained is, that net is a danger, like, and he needs to think is, a little clearer. I even appealed to the fact that he ignored me on Caleb Maupin. Stayed hmm. by Caleb Morping because Caleb was his best friend. Friends before uh, card raise, even though he says card raise before friends. And yeah. I told him, I told him, he just deafen himself. In Discord, there's an option to deafen you so you can't hear anything. Hmm. And so when I start going on about, we'd be in like a group chat, I start going on about Caleb being fascist. He deafened hmm. himself. Didn't want to hear it. Didn't want to know it. Even if you hmm. disagree with it, brother, listen hmm. to the fucking thing. But hmm. these people are calling me privileged. Well, Nicole is like lower labor aristocrat. Fucking... Hmm. You know, they're going on about, they're calling my Chicano, brown fucking comrades, uh, you know, white, while they themselves are crispy white settlers. They did I one drop war trying to call me an Angloid. Like, I recognize I have English heritage. I, mm. I think people should be able to have English heritage and not engage in self-flagellation and just be ashamed of it. You know, mm. we push for a society where the English aren't colonizers, a wonderful mm. thing. But what they did was they did one drop rule. They tried to use the fact I have English heritage to deny me my Celtic heritage, my mm -hmm. colonized heritage, to make it more mm -hmm. justifiable that mm -hmm. them, colonizers, are attacking me. Like, uh -huh. fucking, what's it? And, and what, they want to do one drop rule? If we want to play uh -huh. that stupid game, Nicole is of Norman descent. Uh -huh. They're worse than uh -huh. fucking English. Like, we're, you're the fucking Normans. They're the ones that made the English get worse. So, uh -huh. like, you know, if we're going to play stupid games, and I don't think they're a Norman because they have Norman heritage, because it's just not how that fucking works. Like, mm -hmm. if they they identify with the parts of their heritage that they also have closest relation to. I identify with my Celtic heritage. I also identify with my English heritage. But because I do that latter one, I'm being purposefully shamed for it. And that is vile. Mm -hmm. And they're using it as a way to whitewash me. Completely get rid of my colonized heritage, so I'm just an why. evil angloid. Yeah, well, they're trying to undermine your political uh, credibility, that's all. Andrew, you know what? did you want to say? I want to speak. I want to say one last thing. I want to speak about the English oh, on a bus. I get asked why my accent sounds a bit weird for where I come from, and I'm like, oh, well, I've mm. got like loads of different heritage and you know, stuff like that. You know, I'm English, I'm part Irish, I'm part Scots Irish. I, uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, yeah, Scots Gaelic, and I'm uh, fucking what's it? I'm also part Cymru, and he's like, Oh, you're a right mix of a gypsy, you are. So, you know, that's the kind of treatment I get from the Angloids. But, I, I you know, I'm just going to be associated, you know, like that in that way that is colonial and fucking, uh, you know, putting into fucking like anti-Celtic fucking racism. You're just going to assume us to the English. You know how I many people have been doing that with the Cymru for so fucking long? Hmm. What did you, I got uh, two people who might like to join these organizations: the uh, Convergence and the Bundle. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of activity. You know, there's an international petition that's going around of the Jewish opposition that I just okay, got a hold of. You know, from Europe, hundreds was, of people. You know, are signing it there. They're really well organized there. Yeah. What's it? We keep switching before even getting through the end of the topic i really yes. just want to yeah. like cut oh, through yeah. this uh -huh. um like, I'm sorry. what's it it's, it's, it's making the topic draw out and then it's also broken up and like i just want to like get through it because this is stressful yeah let's conclude like, yeah um so like what's it they want to talk about privilege and i'm glad that you're uh, finding more people that can join the boond and the convergence because we need more people especially with replacing these jackasses um because mm. we need people with revolutionary spirit not this. And we're going to talk about privilege. Well, what they're engaging with is a tactic of the petty bourgeoisie. I will elaborate. Well, gossip oh, is a typical phenomenon of the petty bourgeoisie. It has mm -hmm. a petty bourgeois character and is manifestation of bourgeois ideology. Ill-intentioned gossip is the product of subjectivism 
and has mm. nothing to, in common with sound, realistic, and constructive criticism. Quite the contrary, it has a denigrating and often slanderous character. Whether intentional or not, most of the time, it is unfounded gossip. And when it rarely involves a subject that has any concrete fact or basis, or as its basis, it becomes denigrating due to the very form in which it is developed and the subjective judgment of the person interpreting the subject. Even in this case, from interpretation to interpretation by individuals who indulge in the harmful practice of gossip, it eventually becomes slander. This must be seen as a most odious method of criticism, typical of the petty bourgeoisie. There is no sane, principled, or constructive attitude in it because it, from mouth to ear, and behind the back and to the detriment of the element it takes as its target. Gossip never aims to correct the person it targets. On the contrary, it does great harm to both the individual and the collective. Those who engage in this practice present themselves as moralists because they always disguise their malicious intentions with a, quote, high moral conception, end quote, when in mm. reality it is a amoral conception whether mm. because of the subjectivist spirit that in inspires its formation or because mm. of the foundations on which it rests or because of the forms in which it takes and the objective objectives it pursues those who resort to the to this gossip which in fact can flourish in various fields as a method with a supposedly political content cannot themselves be imbued with a sound political conception because people who hold the subjective People who hold the subjectivist views that the petty bourgeoisie, uh, the, the petty bourgeois practice of gossip presupposes uh, um, uh, presuppositions are never in a position to carry out a true analysis. Oh, sorry, presupposes they are in a they are they are never in a position to carry out a true analysis. Sorry, it's translated from Albanian of the political situation by studying real facts objectively. The method of organizing work based on gossip cannot be a correct method of political analysis. Those who employ it are, we can say without fear of being mistaken, either opportunists or self-interested or sectarians or conservatives, end quote. Hoja mm. on the ideological character of gossip. 1969. Mm. Nice. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, and with nice. the Albanian mm. thing, basically mm. Albanian's never well translated into English. Well, it is sometimes, mm. but it, there's like yeah. struggles with it but in any case so uh, yeah it's you know there's a similar isolated. similar sort of a method of uh, of uh of procedure that objects you know to what's called ad hominem attacks in academia ad hominem means that you know in order to uh, distance uh, themselves and you know somebody you know from a given political position that they cannot you know criticize in itself because the political position is true what they do is they attack the person who is announcing that uh, particular piece of analysis and substituting the person, you know, for the ideas that the person is is projecting, and so they this is an admission that they cannot object to the uh, ideas being projected, and so they have only, you know, to the person with 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 whom they can attack, and that's called ad hominem against that's why the they person. Why they criticize me for the United Front when I push that they should be like pushing because during the Trump video they give like they said, oh, you know, uh, rather than giving a call for action, they made an illusion to we need to intensify struggle, and then said. You can either die on your feet for revolution or live your life on your knees a slave. And it's like, okay, that's inspiring to people, really, is it? Like, new people coming and looking at your video, they're going to think you're a part of a fucking death cult. What the fuck are you saying? You should be death talking death about death. United Front struggle. So left-winged people, generally, they come to the video, they're like, this communist is saying good shit. Yeah, we need to unite. We need to come together. And that's when you make more people communists against fascism. You know, we <laughs> come together. We <laughs> form a, a United Front struggle of a collective of parties. And <laughs> then we fight against fascism. That we split from the social democrats when we pull up and we pull a pool of the proletariat and we go our own way eventually and we push the mm -hmm. revolution further than they're willing to go like mm -hmm. this is like basic tactics and all you needed to say was oh we need to form a united front we need to build this struggle but they wouldn't say that and when i criticized them for it rather than accepting it's a good idea or mm -hmm. criticizing it as a bad idea they basically mm -hmm. avoided it misrepresented what the idea was and then said about them having like gamers that watch their stream and are involved with their community and people who do talk content on other stuff makes them having a, a you it was like united something they didn't say united front it was the closest they got to it and uh it's like that's not a united front that's you online with your buddies a united front <laughs> is in reality you know it's it's fighting for fucking freedom in the first in the in the real world in the in imperial <laughs> court and in the fucking colonies the colonies are fucking 10 steps ahead of us look at the intifada that's a fucking united front
Yeah, there are it is, a few you things know. you kind of yeah. want to say, actually. Yes, uh, you had uh, some sort of interaction. You were being manipulated at one point. I understand, Andrew. There were some uh, tornado sirens going off. Oh, just now? Yeah, just right now, actually. Yo, if you got a basement, I'd get fuck in it. We don't have any basements around here. We have a crawl space, but another thing I'd like to say is that about the Albanian language, in Europe, it's actually what's considered a language isolate, which means there's no other Indo-European language like it. Hmm. Yep. Okay, uh, but besides that, that, them in the Basque, like that. Uh, yeah, Basque yeah, yeah, peoples. yeah. Same thing. Uh, yeah. But uh, Andrew, um, were you? You? T- I think you told me that you were being approached, you know, by some sectarians initiative, uh, and that was trying to prevent you from participating in the convergence or something like that. Isn't that uh, what uh, what was going on for a while there? Not this oh. week. All that happened was someone was talking a lot of crap about one of my fellow comrades. And I'm not naming any names either way, but I had to block them. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I yeah. mean, what's it? Fucking, I know who you're on about. Like, yeah, fucking, you know, all too well. But okay, you know, talking on that. What's it with these people? Like, and what they're engaging with. You know, this is the actions of the petty bourgeoisie and ad hominem, which is, uh, you know, as you explain, it's a little more deeper than just insulting. It's like the center point of like trying to break down someone's argument and heavily manipulate the way people perceive them. It's ad homs are normally more for the perception of people around, but it does both because ad hominem is a big structure for other stuff like gaslighting and other forms of manipulation that interwove with it. And they yeah. always are very highly interwoven and gaslighting is a big tactic of them too and so by using gossip and slander by mm. making it seem like a critique but then not mm. actually making an actual fucking critique like mm. you know you've had like a lot of it to talk about it's been vitriol you've had to speak about how this is just vitriol you know like i can't make other than Oja's position on gossip much of a like uh, approach to this because that's all it is it's gossip like what am i supposed to say about a lot of very shit that doesn't exist other than saying it doesn't exist this is the thing when you make up slander you have the chief position of well they can't fucking prove that they didn't say something because what can you have an anti-evidence that's not how it works so you're in a situation where you're having to fight against a load of vitriol and if you keep responding it becomes a problem for yourself um but if you ignore it, you get in a situation like this where, you know, I feel the need to defend and, like, stand up. Uh, I'm going to bring them on with me if they're free, but I, like, stand up with my Chicano comrades against them being fucking whitewashed. You don't fucking make my brown comrades all of a sudden white. That's fucking mm-hmm. racist. Like, Absolutely. That, I they was going to try and leave this shit, but that was, that, that's gone in for me, that is. Like, that's gone in for me, comrades. And you go mm-hmm. for me, comrades, you have gunned for me. And what's it? And, and so this like process, it, okay. it's, it just completely poisons the well. It creates this situation where you are engaging with a discussion. Now, they've got bigger platforms than me. They have a bigger audience than me. Mm. Um, I work on a different streaming thing with the For We Are Many podcast, so they got more time to stew and do all this fucking crap with me. I got work with the United Panther movement I do and other shit like that I got to fucking keep up on. Mm. I like... Well, but they've made the RPN. They ain't doing anything. Mm. But won't go to protest. Net gets given fucking a massive chunk of cash to get to himself to a protest. And he mm. just makes more excuses because oh, I couldn't afford the bus. You give him the money. Oh, I need comrade number three to go to defend me. I'm on a fucking crutch. I go on my own. You shouldn't go to protests on your own. You should take someone with me. I don't mm. go and pick like a bouncer friend. If I'm going with someone, it's probably another trans sister. Or another someone else, and we're both still vulnerable people, but it's just sticking together. So you have someone to keep you safe. You should be yeah. best in a group of three or four, really. Bigger mm. if better. Uh, bigger is better. But the, if um, I could honestly say, I'd be glad to go with you. Hell yeah. And that's Absolutely. the situation. I'm oh, sorry. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, like, in that situation, these are just bullshit excuses. They're excuses for not doing anything. Portland, fucking mm. Oregon. Massive protests, massive ones. Join them, get involved, do something, make connections. I am yeah. about to start paying dues 
for another Palestinian solidarity organization and get involved as a member because that is what you need to be doing. So I can get in contact with them and start building up connections, start getting interviews, start getting relations with other Palestinian organizations because mm -hmm. I want to actually fucking build a united front in this goddamn fucking country. I want to build the fucking Panther Party in this goddamn fucking country and I ain't going to fucking, you know, be caught being on my ass all the time. It's why I'm fucking trying to kick the shit out of the NHS to make them fucking give me my goddamn operation I've needed for the last six years. But I am fucking... I've been going to protests. I have a really fucking awful injury and a place I don't want to fucking talk about. And mm. it has me bedridden. My muscles are deteriorated. I have barely any strength. I struggle with a light bit of travel once a day, at best a week. That fucks me up. Yeah, I traveled one, it was like, what? It was either 120 or 140 miles there and back. So that's like 200 and fucking like 50 summit miles, either give or take 10. And like, you know, I fucking, I actually fucked myself that day. I made my injury worse, but I went all the mm -hmm. way to the fucking national protest in London. Now you shouldn't fucking worsen your health like I did. That was a bit fucking risky. But if I can fucking do that, you can mask up and take the slight risk. If you don't mask up properly, you might fucking somehow lose your job, which is not that simple. You think bosses are sitting there fucking scanning like fucking videos for a security job? This isn't fucking like high end fucking labor where they care about the image of their fucking company. They're a fucking like security workplace. Cover up like they tell you to so you don't lose your job and keep your fucking identity covered. Because if they cannot see your face, they cannot determine your identity, and if they somehow try to, you can challenge it. If you see, if you know what you look like, and you know your face is invisible, you can challenge it and say there is no way you can say that's me. You have not seen me. You can't identify me. But that's not likely going to happen. Mask up. Go to a fucking protest for once. Build some connections. Yeah. Go to yeah. other things. It's not just protests to go to. But like there's fucking uh, civil actions, stuff like that to get involved in. Heck, you know when they have the um. Uh, what's the what's the convention the Democrats have? Not the DNC. I mean, like the local caucuses. Go to caucuses yeah. just to talk to people. There's a lot of political minded people that are at caucuses. It's not talking to the working class, but you can at least find some left wing groups that want to try and do something like the more outside of just politics and build mm. connections. It's not just mm. always about like we're making the revolution happen now. It's all about, okay, well, what processes can we build to make revolution fertile? It's why like people who are dogmatists about parliament and say, oh, we should just never engage with parliament are actually fucking imbeciles. Lenin mm -hmm. pointed this out. It is like ultra leftism to turn around and say that there is nothing to be done from a revolutionary standpoint in a reactionary parliament. Mm -hmm. That is like, Ultra left dog shite and it is dogmatic. Yeah, Lenin was in the Duma. Yeah, he was a delegate to the Duma. You know, and, mm -hmm. and when somebody, you know, like in the Duma said, nobody really wants to make a revolution. We've already made the revolution. And so Lenin stood up and said, Oh, yes, there is. <laughs> you know, we want and to make the, the revolution. Like they proclaimed it right in the middle. They just burst their bottle. You know, like that even, was it. Even the uh, Maoist. Streamer Black Red Guard is a member of the uh, Maoist section of the DNC. Not DSA. <laughs> Sorry, he's not part of the DNC, the DSA, you mean? DSA. Oh, DSA. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. DSA, oh, okay. my bad. Yeah, that's worthwhile. Yeah, okay. I'm I said DNC I've been... earlier. You had the autism moment of like DNC plaguing your brain because of the mass <laughs> evil that goes on there. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. I'm sorry. There is a, a left wing to the uh, Democratic Socialists of America, the DSA, isn't there? And they're yeah. sort of, you know, supposed to be planning a split from the Democratic Party to form a united front, you know, alternative, probably social democratic formation. Is, is that happening? You know, but there's no news about it. You know, like, Andrew, I don't think you know anything about it. Have you heard anything about that, Kara? I've heard about um, it from uh, the Black uh, Red Guard. Uh-huh. So there are people that want to try and convert the DSA into a united front, but like uh, there's a struggle going on. There's been a power struggle going on for a while in the DSA. So you've got the Maoists, uh, the MLs, and the uh, revisionist Marxists that are oh, like yeah. trying to push it a lot more left. Oh, and social and radical social democrats. I shouldn't forget those. Uh, the the good social democrats. 
I have respect for the the radical left side of social democracy, mm -hmm. not because Absolutely. I think they won't stab us in the back, but because I like uh, well, I don't think all of them will. I think a lot of them will turn into revolutionaries over time because there's a fertile ground for it. But it, it's that it's them coming to terms with that social democracy is not what they think it is. It's not some democratic socialist route to ending capitalism. Well, and, Stalin was it, originally a social democrat. Well, that's um, what it was called. Yeah, it was a federated party, the Russian uh, Social Democratic so, Party. No, I, I would, I would actually contest that. Um, Stalin actually was a communist. He was a member of the Social Democratic Party. Um, I, I don't think he, he might have been a social democrat in his youth, but I remember him coming across politics through Darwin and Marx, and that's how he come across politics in that sense. Like he was kind of a lost guy for like a lot of his life. I might be getting that incorrect. He was it's a, a clerical long student. Time since I looked into he was he was en route to becoming a priest. Not well, a priest he never liked it. He always hated the of the course, clerical yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but he was uh, right. the Social Democratic Party meant a little slight different thing there. It was like, oh, you had the socialists and then the Democrats, which are now the Social Democrats. Um, they were two sides of the party because it was something. Oh, yes. um, and there was the Bundestag uh, section of the party as well. It was a federated party. There was the Bolsheviks, it's, Mensheviks, and the Bund. There was a three sort of, you know, cornered, you know, like federated, you know, social democratic well, party. Originally, the Bund and the, the Bolsheviks were grouped together, and they yeah. were seen as the radical left. And then you yeah. had the, the democratic side that wanted to it just push made. for bourgeois democracy. Mm. Um, I did really want to say one thing very quickly mm -hmm. with the, the RSDLP and um, what's it? The... Uh, um, Engels supposedly was the, the progenitor of that idea of the unity of those groups in the way it happened, except Engels actually slammed Kortsky, who was publishing his works at the time, for manipulating mm. his works and changing what his works were saying without oh. saying anything to Engels. Yeah, so a lot of those concepts might have already have been bunkly manipulated in the first place because the fact that it was one party with formations in it rather than a collaboration of parties was one of the biggest failures of how it... Because it wasn't really doing a proper... It was supposed to be a united front, but instead of being like an, an united front as we see it now where communists need to maintain their party power and representation, it was more of a scramble of sections of factions inside mm. a, a party that was crumbling to pieces. That was it became semi-separate parties later on mm. um when the conflicts were really getting spicy in the fucking 1910s but originally mm. it was supposed to be like a, a singular formation but it was always split since 1906 it's been like split between the fucking revolutionaries and the fucking revisionists because mm -hmm. that's the thing mm -hmm. as well people don't get social de democrats a lot of the times are playing into revisionism even if we don't call them that because mm -hmm. a lot of them are like marxists like not good marxists they're the bad kind but the they are like reading marxism so uh if you look at uh -huh. a lot of the rsdlp like the mensheviks most of them were so-called marxists lenin mm -hmm. would put in brackets don't laugh um <laughs> <laughs> But Andrew, I have a question. What about Bernie? What faction is he associated with in the DSA? He's he's in the DSA, right? He's an independent. He he's, he's essentially a moderate. He's essentially what? Did, I'm sorry, my mom keeps calling. I said he's essentially a moderate liberal. Yes, but is he associated with any particular faction in the DSA? Oh, I'm not actually too sure because no. it's been a while since I've... Uh -huh. no, he's not but he is, not. he's in there, isn't he? Bernie's, you know, a member of the DSA. No, no, no. I keep trying to say he's not. He's not. Oh. No, oh. not even AOC is in the DSA. They just, uh, they just endorse her. That was uh, the only oh, reason that that was a thing. They endorse uh -huh. these candidates. They don't even like. They barely uh -huh. acknowledge the DSA when it gives them like, uh, like brownie points. They'll uh -huh. give a little bit of an acknowledgement, but then otherwise they just treat it like it doesn't exist. Bernie, the supposed uh -huh. democratic socialist, won't be a runner for the democratic socialists of America. He won't even like try and bring them into the fold in that regard. He's like, no, the Democrats suit him. He became a full Democrat man uh, by, by Biden's request. Like now he's no what? longer really. Bernie's a full Democratic member now. He's no longer. I, I think so. Yeah. I, like maybe maybe it didn't happen, but I remember hearing something about that. I might have been caught up on misinformation, but. Mm. Well, I fucking heard. Mm. Um, but, I do have yeah. a fun fact about Stalin, though. 
what's the relation yeah oh um about the democratic uh i mean rsdlp the russian social democratic labor party he wrote this little section about uh electoral politics and how people that are quite like Bernie Sanders. He didn't he obviously didn't, wasn't talking about Bernie Sanders, but how certain social democrats were revisionists in certain ways and it is quite reminiscent of Bernie Sanders in a lot of ways I'd say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, um I'd like to report it. on uh I've actually done some uh political work this week <laughs> that I'd like to report to you. And it's uh, written down here. It's brief. And uh, I think it's crucial to the whole uh, Palestinian solidarity campaign, but it's not appreciated as such yet. Because even, you know, the legal representation to the International Court of Justice, you know, disregard the underlying premise of the Zionist argumentation and their rationale. Their rationale being that they claim to be a national liberation movement on behalf of the oppressed Jewish people, okay? Now, the oppressed Jewish people, you know, is one thing, but, you know, to be claiming to be representative of the uh, Jewish people as a whole is another matter, which is, which is, you know, not true, first of all, you know, because even uh, by their own sort of definition, majority of the Jewish people are not Zionists because they don't live in the Zionist state, one. Two, they only became... Uh, predominant, you know, in the political representation of the Jewish people after the Jewish Bund, you know, was wiped out by the Nazis, to which they had acceded to, and to which they had tried to collaborate with. So, you know, to claim that they're representative of the Jewish people is, is you know, disgusting, to say the least. So... Yeah, we can't forget about the Havara Agreement. Yeah. Uh, so, um, in order to sort of, you know, take away the perception that the Zionists used to build up their own constituency, and they still have a very strong, you know, like base of support. In order to ne uh, negate, you know, that base of support, one has to sort of take on the question of, you know, national self-determination. What and who and how, you know, can national self-determination, you know, be implemented? And this applies, you know, to any other sort of, you know, national struggle as well. So the point is that, you know, one, National liberation struggles do have a right to armed struggle. It says so in the international law. Armed struggle, those words, armed struggle, okay? But where does it define armed struggle? Now, the armed struggle that I know of, you know, which was my mother's brother who was a partisan, they had a code. And the code was, you know, you take out the officers, you know, of the occupying Nazi army, you take out the soldiers, you know, advancing on you, and you take out, you know, the informers who, who send people to get killed. So... Uh, you know, like, where do civilians come into that? Nowhere. You know, like, you don't attack civilians, you know. That's called genocide. So, you know, the Zionists cannot claim, you know, national self-determination as, as a right to commit genocide against other people, which is precisely what, you know, the Zionist leaders are, are claiming, you know, uh, as a right. You know, they're claiming the right, you know, to wipe out Amalek, as they call it, Actually, you know, which though, is, you know. I would, I would make a clarification, though, that when um, colonized people do end up killing the the, the in some cases so-called, because it's not always actually civilians, and I'll get into why that's the case, but civilians of a colonizer. Um, we need more volume from that, you. That, oh, for God's sake, it's fucking mic. Now it's good, oh. yeah, that's good. Fucking, what's it? So, like, with a colonizer, civilian, or so-called, given in a lot of cases, that you couldn't really call someone a, com a civilian instead of a combatant when they're armed, dangerous, and landowning on stolen property. But, yeah. like, when that happens and occurs... I mean, they do try to avoid it. You look at any of the codes of them. Um, you know, some of them have patchy histories than other because some of them are more reactionary groups. That's why you always tell people don't just look at Hamas as the PFLP, DFLP, the PLO in general, and like other groups like that that you know are more dynamic. There's other Islamist groups as well. Like Hamas is not the only one of those. But the um, what's it? The the situation is that they will try, but there's sometimes situations where it's unavoidable. Um, and it occurs because of either accident, incident, uh, bombing attacks, or terror attacks on a state, and that can sometimes impl impl implicate on civilians. You know, when the Irish were bombing in Britain to scare them into not wanting the war to go on anymore, and the British to get their fucking troops out, 
They mm. weren't thinking of let's just go bomb specifically the military targets. Not all of them were. Some of them were going about bombing cities. Now, really, they should have just been bombing the military targets and making mm. a statement that way. Yeah, but that's what the Palestinians we, are doing the, right if now. If the British are going to get really judgy about when they did bomb civilian places, they should think about what they're doing to civilian places. It doesn't mm. necessarily justify attacking civilians, but it does justify the need to do whatever you can to retaliate when your people are being wiped out. You've got to do whatever you can. But these people are all trying so hard not to target civilians, and they have barely killed any of the Israeli civilian population. How much mm. has Israel killed? Why is this mm. even like a fucking argument anymore? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's about uh, the tallied uh, number of uh, dead Palestinians has now come to 2%. And you double that, you know, with those who are buried by the rubble. And then you, uh, you see that yeah, this is continuing every day. You know, there's a massacre every day. So we have to deal with the psychological rationale that is being used by the Zionists to justify, you know, this genocide that they're perpetuating. So... The question is not just, you know, the question of uh, morality, not the question only of international law, even. Uh, I, uh, I have done uh, a critique of the underlying principle by which the Zionists seek to justify the immorality and the violations of international law that they claim as a right. What right do they claim? They claim the right of national self-determination and the right to, to uh, armed struggle as a defensive measure. You know, When they talk about Israel's right to defend itself, this is what they're talking about. They're talking about the right to defend the Jewish people, but they're not representative of the Jewish people in the first place, as I've explained already. But even more so, the use of the term right to self-determination is not valid. Why? Because of this. Considering that any right must be reciprocal. Such a principle applies to all groups that become aware of their own identity in freedom and self-determination. While the Zionist state of Israel in Palestine is established according to a claim based in the right of self-determination and in the name of the Jewish people, any such a right does not permit the annulment of the right of self-determination amongst the nation of the Palestinians, the Palestinian people, this is the very same reciprocal right. A right of self-determination cannot annul the same right of another group. Such an attempt to violates a principle of reciprocity, a principle of reciprocity. And I might add, I have a whole chapter in my doctoral thesis explaining what that means. Without which there is no justice and law and no such right as such. By violating the national self-determination of the Palestinians, the Zionists cannot claim self-determination on behalf of the Jewish people because they've just violated the right in the first place. The fact you know, that they're a colonizer, fun. the fact that they're occupying land that has no right belonging to them is like... Yes, also the but even the claim to self-determination, even if it is not really self-determination, even the claim to self-determination in that method of operation annuls itself, you know, in terms of fundamental principles of logic. Furthermore... Well, even if you go by... Even if you go by international law, it's technically snuffed by that. And international law is kind of shit. Even that would say, yeah, no, uh, fuck off Israel in this regards. And like, you know. Yes, but um, international law has a contradiction embedded in it because it is calling for national self determination as a right, but doesn't define it in terms of a right uh, that is used to deny the very same right of another people. International law doesn't well, talk about that. So by defining, you know, national self-determination in and of itself and the right to armed, you know, uh, struggle to do it, to achieve it, it, it doesn't take into account, you know, what Zionism is. Zionism okay. is, is not defined yet by international law. And I'm trying to do so, you know, with this addendum. What I'm trying to get at is so there is something in the international law that targets this. It's part of talking about genocide and other stuff like that. So um, it talks about genocide. Yes, covered. Yes. So no, no, Not... no. I'm saying it's a, no. I'm saying it's a part of that. So let me finish. So occupiers are not granted a right to self determination. They are not granted a right to self defense by UN yes. law. Israel has no right to self defense against Palestine because they occupy all of Palestine. Since 1967, there is no official Palestinian state, which means as far as international law is concerned, Israel is occupying all of Palestine right now. Yes, but at the same time, they are claiming the right of self-determination to occupy the territory. No, I'm so there's saying, a contradiction no, in no, international I'm saying, law. No, I, I'm saying what it says, says they yes. don't have a right to self-determine in this regard. They have a right to be stopped. It's an anti, it's supposed yes. to be an anti-fascist clause. Yes. It was 
put in by the uh, by a Polish yes, uh, by philosopher. Yes, of course. But nonetheless, you know, the self determination is in contradiction to the fact that they're in, they're doing you know their the self determination by an occupation. The, no, but the but, point I'm saying but, is that the self determination is the thing that's being contradicted. It's being counterposed. By a different clause that says eh, eh, you can't have that clause because right self determination enough. is not fully. The clause. That's what I'm no, trying. Let me that's finish. Let I'm... me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Right of self determination is the clause that defines the right for self defense. In that other clause, it says Israel has no right to self defense. None. Zero. In that situation, because they're an occupier and the people of Palestine are under their control, it is considered instantly genocide the moment that they start issuing a right of self-defense to target them, because as you said, the right of national liberation is something that also exists. And most of the time, Israel isn't even fucking defending itself. It's fucking attacking first. They attacked yes. first by bombing tower blocks in 2023. Okay. That's not the problem. Oh, now, of course, you know, sorry. like what, the, what, the, what Zionism is doing is outlawed by international law, yes. But what I'm saying is that international law is faulty because it is also ingrained in international law that there's something called, you know, national self-determination. And this is unlimited. It is not defined. I am defining it in a limited sense because the right to self-determination is not unlimited as it is it, thought to be and it is I mean, proclaimed to be because it is contradicted by international law. There is a contradiction in international law that I'm seeking here to resolve. I'm saying that whilst that isn't defined, the actual position does counter it out. Yes, it, of course, it's illegal. Being unlimited in its definition doesn't mean yes, other things Yes, but they're go, using it. They're yeah. using national yeah, self-determination. I know they're using it. I'm trying to say they're using it illegally, wrong, literally. Of course. People yes, from the U.S. That's not no, listen, enough. Listen, listen, let me fucking finish. People yes. from the fucking U.N. have yes. said that it is illegal and they do not have this right. The UN, the people who write the international law, yes, the yes, ICC, we know. they have all said it violates it. That's the point yes, I'm we saying. Know that. Like, I know but, it's flawed, but in this okay, case, that's, okay. they're, they're, you know, I'm saying, I'm saying they're just making shit up. It's not about international of law. Of course. No, that's no, good just, enough an argument. That's good enough, you know, a logic, you know, for you. You just let me, for, you just let, any, you, you just let for, me finish. For, I'm yes. saying by international law, Fully illegal, no actual legal loophole. They are fully illegal. What's happening is Israel is doing this what it's always done. It doesn't give a shit what international law says. It does what it wants. International I'm not law talking is about law. I'm talking thing. about, you know, I'm talking about the psychological rationale, the political rationale that designers oh, use and how it can be countered. Because, you know, your arguments in international law works for everybody else but the Israelis. And the Israelis are manipulated by the claim of national self-determination here. And they think that they At have, the you know, like day, a logical rationale, you know, to implement national self-determination in any way that they see fit because they are exercising their self-determination. And in a certain formal logical sense, yes, but the right no, to self-determination is not, not unlimited. By, now I'm introducing no, a new limitation here by the principle of reciprocity, which doesn't exist I, in international law. It's not encoded. And a principle of reciprocity should be encoded in international law. But it isn't. But I'm trying to do so here. You know what I mean? In, as far as Marxism defines right of self determination, that don't mean shit. Like they don't have a, like if you are occupying someone, that's no longer your self determination. You are now involved in someone yeah, else's course. determination. Like that's yes. the thing. Once you are entwined into someone else through oppression, you're no longer self determining. Yeah, you're determining someone else's reality, which is not self determination. That's that's actuation of a colony. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm getting at. Like those aspects are poorly, but they are defined. It's just that the illegal, like it just means nothing. Like and so what you are correct. Rationale needs to be crafted to get to that. But you know, you mentioned a legal aspect, and I was saying that like, well, actually, in international law, it does define bits that actually associate with that because it's supposed to be read in full but because it can be broken up like that it, they, they interpret you know like how the british treat law how they they take it in chunks and however they want to think about it that's how international law kind of works it's like the flimsy british constitution that only matters when they want to be concrete about it and basically doesn't exist when they don't care about it Yes, but, but what what you call chunks you know perhaps is what i call the levels there's different levels of law you know, there's, you know, like civil law and then there's 
you know, I'm uh, not on about levels. I'm saying a judge, a high court judge, will look at the British Constitution and he decides ex how it's interpreted. Like, and I don't mean like the U.S. where they're interpreting it based off a rigid interpretation. Half of it isn't written, so they literally just get to make shit up as they go along. Okay. That's what I'm on about by chunks. Yes, I'm saying but... they just change the law as they see fit, regardless okay. of how it's defined. But. Um... What I'm saying it's is perfect. international law is not strong enough, and I'm I'm seeking oh, to strengthen it. Yeah, I it. know, I know. I'm just sort of pointing out. That even does, in terms of you know things, legal logic, it is not as strong enough. And I'm adding, I'm making an addendum, you know, which will take care of the contradiction of self determination. Self determination is a contradiction unto itself, because there can there is you know, uh, you know like oh it gets so complicated because you have to deal with sovereignty, you have to deal with territorial frontiers, you know, and, and you have to deal with, you know, self-determinations that contradict each other for the same territory, which is what's happening in Palestine. So how to resolve that, you know, in terms of illegal logic, you know, be, is important because of the uh, propaganda use made of, you know, self-determination by the Zionist regime, which claims it's acting on behalf of the Jewish people or behalf of the just the Israeli Hebrew nation. You know, they're still, you know, thinking that they can do whatever they want in order to protect themselves because they don't realize that they put themselves into a precarious situation by their definition of self-determination because they don't accommodate the self-determination of the Palestinians in a federation yeah, it's because they want to have a state. It's the state that's the problem that's, that's imposing one self-determination over another. The that's state is not the their problem. Rationale. That's not their rationale, though. It's not, you can't, or it's not just the state, because of course the state, the state defines these angles. The state is a representation of class control. But the um, what's it? What it is is it's ideological more than it is like economical or rational. It's based on yes. fascist ideology. It's irrational, yes. and so yes. it's well, fascism is based upon national self determination as well. But, but, that was the whole no, Nazi but, thing, no, you know. That's not, that Germany that's was not being their, hard done by, and therefore focus. Germany could do what it no, wanted. I'm still trying to say something. That's not their focus. Their focus is they want to eradicate the Palestinians. Yes. You go speak to like Israeli people on the street and they'll say it. Fucking Empire Files went down there and did it. You yeah, can it's not, it, yeah but I, of course, in terms want, of morality, you know, like it's obvious. Blood. But in terms of political logic, you know, what that means is that in order to resolve the contradiction of self determination, they're willing to eliminate the party which is claiming self determination in opposition to their own claim to self determination. It's not as simple as it just being self determination. They could have granted themselves self determination anywhere fucking else other than a place that they had been disconnected from for over a thousand years. They could have gone anywhere another, to start colonizing uh, it. The they could have colonized, they could have, they could have colonized Germany, yes. they could have colonized France, but they colonized Palestine. And they have done the American empty land myth. So I'm saying it's deeper than just self-determination. It is it's 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 to thrive on the land that is stolen. They destroy they, they go on about how they care about the old Jewish culture. They destroy yes, stuff. Yes, because they've created a hierarchy of, of self-determination. Let, let me finish. Let me finish. They go on about how much they got fucking about old Jewish stuff and then bomb the shit out of thousands of year old architecture. Yeah, but we they know all that. To, okay, let's they go don't, beyond it's that. It's not even just about Jewish self-determination. If they're going to wipe out their own culture, they want to obliterate it and take it over because of white supremacy. That There's is that part no of it. There is, yeah, there, is, there is, yeah, there is, yeah, Europe, that, there is Europeanism. That, you know, like, there is there is Europeanism that's coming into this, and it's that Nazism. This is a big part so, of it. It's very irrational. Yeah, we know so, that. Like, yeah, but that's know the that. point I'm you getting know, that's at. Not is the it's, it's not just no. It is the a question. Part is of the how question. to revolutionize it you is, know the Israelis? No, but how to like, make a revolution within the Jewish you've people. You've got to start from the ground basis of you need to be combating racism. That's the big problem. That's it's a racism. moralistic argument. They you know, like they don't care if they're racist. Less of people. It they doesn't work. They don't care. They see them as lesser people. They see themselves yes, as supremacists. they're racist. Yeah. Yeah. But so you think how you know, do you like undermine that? The question is how you undermine that. Show them a better law. By it, you've right. got to undermine that by showing them how bunk their ideas are, or they need a shift in change that's more no, aggressive. No, that approach doesn't work. That's a Christian approach. You know, moralistic. No, it doesn't work. no. Actually, actually, I'm not engaging in moralism. I'm engaging in so, integrating. Like, no, because if you get people to know people from oppressed backgrounds, it can change them. If you get people to engage with ideas they have yeah, never engaged that's before, not, yeah, we've been doing that for them. decades. But let me finish. Let worked. me finish. Yes. Let me finish. Let me finish. You're going on about Christian stuff, but you're talking about reciprocity, which is literally something that is talked about in Marxism, toxic reciprocity from the Christians. 
So like, you know, let's not get into Christian concepts too fucking deep. But what I wanted to say was that you've got ways of combating them that doesn't involve just a pure argument of logic. Because if you only combat well, it, combat I know. It, you we don't know show that. them, you don't, you've got to figure out why someone hates a person. Then you, you've got to question why they think that's a reason to hate them. And then try and counterpose those positions. I am talking okay. about methodological. So now you, got, now you can let me finish let me, reading. Can you? Can you? Can you? My stop? motion here. I'm trying. I'm trying to speak. It's about methodological use of the Socratic method. You know, getting engaged in actually oh. asking questions and breaking down why the racism is there. Because it, you're it right. Doesn't it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Let me finish. You are right about needing to attack what you are on about, but on its own, which is the point I'm making, it is not enough. But you are trying to stop me from making that point as if I'm countering you and saying your idea shouldn't be made. No, it should be. But on its own, you will not reach the heart of racism. You will reach the heart of pure cold logic. Your two-state solution is what you'll get out of that. Not the end of fucking Zionism. So what I'm trying to state is like the factor that you need to get deeper into the racist angle of it because it's a core angle of it, the white supremacy, the need to be occupiers of Palestinian land instead of living in Palestine. And that's the point I'm trying to fucking get to. And the other part is, is it's going to come with combat too. There is no peaceful way out of this. There's going to be a violent takeover in some way, shape or form. So a lot of them just ain't going to be convinced. They're going to be fighters. Because they're labor aristocrats okay. being on stolen land at, at best, if not petty bourgeoisie. So like okay. their allegiances are to the capitalists more than Look. it is to the working class struggle. Look, I have to finish my presentation here. I've been interrupted and I want to continue and finish. I'm going to continue now. Furthermore, the claim by such a Zionist state to be representative or spokesperson of the entire Jewish people is in contradiction with the fact that the majority of the Jewish people do not have a free voice by voting in the elections conducted by the state concerned. There are more Jewish people who live and are citizens outside the state, 8.3 million, compared to the number of Jewish Israelis, 6.9 million, that is 45%. Consequently, even while it pretends, you know, to be a majority, and they lie and they say that a majority of the Jewish people live, you know, inside the state. Consequently, such a state could not claim the right of self-determination for the Jewish people, since it did not have the mandate to do so. As a territory of the Jewish people by precedence, the place of Birobajan was established in 1926, 22 years before the establishment of the Zionist state in the name of Israel. Even the name Israel is fraudulent, since it exists by origin as the name of a people and not a state. The slogan exploited oftentimes, Am Yisrael Chai, long live Israel, refers to the people and not the state. The correlation of Hamadinat velo Yisrael is the determination that the state is not Israel. In terms of Judaism, you know, Israel was not the name used for a state. It was the name used for the Jewish people as a whole. The result by consequence is that the right of self-determination cannot be taken in hand by a faction without a mandate of one people that denies the same right of another people. It is without doubt that such a claim to the right of self-determination cannot take precedence over another, not only by reciprocity, but also that, although international law has not been activated to defend the Jewish people during the Holocaust, it is not a justification to ignore international law since, but surely the opposite. So, you know, that's why, you know, I had the slogan painting, you know, one Holocaust does not justify another. And that's what the Zionists are doing, you know. They're justifying, you know, uh, their disregard of international law. They know what international law is. They don't care. And they're convincing the, the others, you know, to not care either, you know, because of what happened to the Jewish people. So they say, you know, like, look what happened to us and you didn't defend us, you know, so we can do what we want now to defend ourselves. And we determine how we're going to defend ourselves. So that argument has to be broken down. That pillar of Zionism has to be destroyed and vaporized. And this is what this is. Uh, this motion is doing here, you know, because it is attacking Zionism itself, and not just those who have been duped by Zionism who are not Jewish, but those who have been duped by Zionism who are Jewish need this argument because they haven't heard this, and, you know, and they assume make certain assumptions which waterproof them against you know international law. 
And, and, and I know I've met them, you know, they come to me and they talk to me on the vigil. I know how they're thinking and I know how they to counter like their thinking. colonized in this question as well. Like I've seen some of it, like both from your videos and in personal experience of protests, they act like they're the ones that are fucking colonized. And it's like, yeah, yo, no, <laughs> well, that's the, that's the, that's the Palestinians there, brethren. Like you're, you're wrong there. <laughs> and, um, you know, they, they've done this twice. This is the second Holocaust. I mean, technically it's been one big continuous one that slowed down here and there it's it kept its speed at a pace but you know this this is the second nakba nakba yeah. is the holocaust against the palestinians oh, yeah. there's no other my way. comrades are under fire there now yeah right now in the west bank yeah oh, wait andrew's trying to say something since kamala harris started running for president <laughs> for president i mean we started calling her holocaust harris yeah, the, the you know bad income on that one because the fucking twenty million she just sorry tw was it twenty billion sorry she just sent over to fucking Israel is a big sign. Yeah, she didn't uh, and, post um, that at all. Yeah, uh, what's but the it? killer uh, killer uh, what is her Camila killer Camila is what I've heard her called. Um, yeah. Doc, I will say, sorry for going off a bit too much. I got too caught up in the conversation. I forgot the presentation was happening. <laughs> It's been a really exhausting day. I've been all over the place. Um, uh, been doing a lot of shit in my yard and stuff. Okay, that's the end of the share. Okay, so, so uh, that's what I worked on this week, and uh, I've been circulating it. I should send it to the uh, to the Fatah party, my ex oh, yeah, uh, no. ambassador. I, really... I, I sent I him one so. version of it, but now it's finished. You know, but that's what's got to be used. You know, in terms of the you know the legal arguments that are being made that are not being made. I so. would like to see like what like you could do a series of stuff and talk about the other things like the racism angle, the way that they perspectivize these sort of things, the 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 Judeo Christian like uh like uh white mythology, white, uh, yeah, ideological whitewashing mythology, of Jewish and the mythology that they built around it, and like mm -hmm. make it like a book series. Uh, of like, or or a paper series, I guess it'd be more like, uh, like a collection well, of papers. Well, a lot of that has yeah. already been written down. It's in the Manual of Revolution. You know, there's the two uh, two books, you know, well, maybe, comprising maybe about the more those... than a thousand pages altogether. There's a lot of these maybe, discussions are taking place there. Maybe take some of those parts and like group it with that. So it's like specifically a piece here where it's like they've got it all there where they can see the different kind of things that they need to go for an argument of and how they intersect. And like oh, on Zionism in particular, yeah. Because mm -hmm. like then we can look at like okay, like okay, how does then the the their their, their pseudo self determination connect into like racism, mm -hmm. uh, the the Europeanization of uh, like their concept of Judaism that completely mm -hmm. esconds its um you know alienated position that Judaism has had in Europe and instead embrace the European cultures that have constantly pushed them aside. And uh, like isolated them from the the common people, um, mm. you know, like Jewish people would be incredibly poor, but everyone in the poor would push to target Jewish people. Um, it's actually a myth where they go on about this banker thing because one Jewish person here or there is the banker for some Christian king who's not allowed to touch gold because he's a very good Christian, as he goes and slaughters all the fucking like uh, people. Oh, that that whole and... thing, you know, yeah. The Medici's, you know, extolled as cultural icons, you know, in terms of European civilization, but they were bankers, you know, and they charged interest, you know, they, they were bankers, but to the mm -hmm. church, they didn't charge interest. Mm -hmm. But the Jewish bankers, they did charge interest to, to the banks, you know, so the banks didn't go to the Jewish bankers, they went to the Medici's, you know, so and the Medici's, you know, got, you know, good promotion because of that, you know, like and every Sunday, you know, they would get a mention, you know, from the priest. Okay, so what would happen though? And, and the Jewish bankers, would you know, like... would get, you know, like it's 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 you know, the whole mythology, you know, that it goes beyond irrationality to justify, you know, what one nationality considers itself determination. You know, it's the same they, thing. They'd also switch when like there'd be a crisis because they they kill the banker, and so sometimes they go get from a different one. And, um, you know, uh, I mean, uh, you know, with the Jewish banker, they are really likely to blame them for an economic mm. crisis. So they mm. would they would unhire them. They would unlike unalive them. They would send them to hell. <laughs> yeah. Like, loot, loot their 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 you know, Holocaust was one big looting operation as well, you know, which is not sort of oh, taken yeah, into consideration no. as well. Fucking, it's the same thing, you know, when the bankers, out. you know, were just expropriated, you know, from time to time and the Jewish people fucking, expelled as a result. Yeah. Fucking people's fucking teeth out. 
like holy shit god watching like a lot of the fucking like holocaust films Schindler's list was pretty ruthless about it where you saw the pile of all these things like fucking teeth jewelry necklaces watches gold wallets purses just anything they can get their hands on that could be worth of any value in gold yeah. like and boom it's gone um yeah. and, and it was, Andrew, what it was, was that? melting it all down and turning it into gold bars yeah. and these, some of these gold nazi gold bars are missing and it is like yeah. uh, apparently britain has some in their uh bank of england and the uh, vatican they want the Vatican is holding it, you know, as security, you know, for the Nazis. <laughs> That's where it they is, I'm sure. They for when they come back. They're like, they're waiting on yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, they know yeah, it's yeah. coming at some point because those little bastards won't fuck off. Yeah. Wow. Okay, this has been a nice long session. And next week, Cornel from Belgium is coming online. And so we're going to get, you know, the European scene. I want to know what's going on in France. You know, I hear there's a petition trying to get the president uh, expelled, you know, because he's not allowing the government to be formed. From the largest party that was elected <laughs> you know he's trying to stop you know a left government oh wow what's it you know um i made an important mention of like the need to like be involved in government i've got a good quote for us to end on um, okay uh the authors of the theses are engaged in muddled thinking they have forgotten the experience of many if not all revolutions which shows the great usefulness during a revolution of a combination of mass action outside a reactionary parliament with an opposition sympathetic for, or better still, directly supporting the revolution within it. Of course, anyone would be in error who voiced the outmoded viewpoint or in general considered it impermissible in all and any circumstances to reject participation in bourgeois parliaments. I cannot attempt here to formulate the conditions under which a boycott is useful since the object of this pamphlet is far more modest, namely, to study Russian experience in connection with certain topical questions of the international communist tactics, Russian experience has provided us with one, one successful and correct instance, 1905, and another that was incorrect, 1906, of the use of a boycott by the Bolsheviks. Analyzing the first case, we see we have that, that we succeeded in preventing a reactionary government from convening a reactionary parliament in a situation in which extra-parliamentary revolutionary mass action, strikes in particular, was developing at great speed, when not a single section of the proletariat and the peasantry could support the reactionary section of, uh, the, sorry, the reactionary government in any way, and when the re revolutionary proletariat was gaining influence over the backward masses through the strike struggle, and through the agrarian movement, it is quite obvious that this experience is not applicable to present day. European conditions, uh, it is likewise quite obvious, and the foregoing arguments bear this out, that the advocacy, even if with reservations by the Dutch and the other quote-unquote lefts of refusal to participate in parliaments is fundamentally wrong and detrimental mm -hmm. to the cause of the revolutionary proletariat, end quote. Mm -hmm. Quote-unquote left-wing communism, an infantile mm. disorder by Lenin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard uh, in Canada there was a formulation called the extra parliamentary opposition, which worked together with the internal <laughs> parliamentary opposition. You know, the two are supposed to work together. In fact, that's what I did. You know, when I was working, when I was on the peace camp on Parliament Hill, which we maintained for two years, the NDP caucus, you know, was was photocopying all the documents that we we're handing out for free to all the people who came by. <laughs> so we we're doing, you know, like anti-war education in mass handing out hundreds of leaflets a day and then selling you know buttons you know macro uh, uh buttons what do they call macaron you know that would click onto people's you know clothes <laughs> we're selling them for a dollar you know that would finance our food you know we were self-sustaining operation <laughs> well okay i've made my conclusion andrew what is your conclusion there is one thing I'd like to say for anyone who watches this or for either of you is that there's this uh, World War II movie about the Holocaust made in the Soviet Union called Come and See. And it takes place in Belarus as a Soviet partisan fights Nazis. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I don't know why it's stuck at the bottom of my message on there and it won't just delete it. I keep pressing the tick and it comes back. But anyway, you've been uh, too far away from your microphone. You have to be closer to your microphone, I think, so we can get more volume from you. It's clear enough now, but we don't have the volume. I have my microphone like, you know, 
just here, you know, six inches away from me. But I've concealed it, you know, under and not above my head. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. What's it? The um is a really important thing to get to is that like, you know, in struggle we can't just be these like fucking dogmatists that are like, well, both sides are the same and all that. And it's like, okay, well then we're both sides the same. With the SDP fucking like they were anti-Semitic. They were racist. Were they like manufacturing the most industrial genocide the world has ever seen? So like we can't just equate the SDP to the Nazis, even though there's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of similarities. It's almost like social fascism and fascism have some relation between each other. But there's also a situation of, as Lenin pointed out, you want to have the react the pro the more progressive sector of the bourgeoisie in government than the reactionaries because it will get worse. Everything will get worse. And you don't want shit to just get worse if you're not ready mm. and organized, because then mm. people are going to turn to fascism. People are going to turn mm. reactionary because you scratch a liberal and a fascist bleeds. Uh, so while society is still liberalized and has not yeah. been introduced to the revolutionary struggle in any way, yeah. how many of them are going to just turn into communists all of a sudden, like these accelerationists seem to think, these dogmatists? Uh, in uh, conclusion, um, what I was thinking when you were talking is... Uh, you know, the revolution, by definition, is something that is an innovation. It is new. Each time there is a revolution, it is a new revolution. No revolution copies, you know, a previous revolution because a revolution corresponds to the to the context, to the to local socioeconomic conditions. It only happens, you know, according to what is the material reality. And this is uh, materialism, historical materialism, dialectical historical materialism all, all together. So, by definition, a revolution is an innovation. It has to be invented. It has to be different than what we have learned from before, even though we learned from before of how revolutions have been made. But it, is, it doesn't give us, you know, a prescription on how to do the revolution that we are engaged in at the present time, which is different than any other preceding revolution. And every particular revolution in every given national context as well is different from every other national revolution, too. So we have to be innovative. And that's why we have to be talking here in the Convergence Forum, because this is where we figure that's, out, you know, how we can continue. That's something that Stalin himself points out. Um, mm. uh, and in some of his later writings, he reaffirms positions on the national question. And he talks about how, like, he's talking about, like, the... Something he mentions in the national question is, like, the right self-determination and, like, uh, um, what's it, national cultural autonomy and how they can relate to each other and how there's different forms of... Well, he doesn't get into different forms of national cultural autonomy, but he is talking about a different form from Lenin, if you look at the way they're talking about it. Um, Lenin's approach to it was a little more bullish than Stalin's. I kind of like Stalin's approach to national cultural autonomy, where it's like, okay, well, there are nations within nations, and mm. uh, he elaborates more on it in later pieces oh. with yeah. the sort of relationship that like the Soviet Union has. Like The Soviet Union isn't 17 nations. It's a hell of a lot mm. more than that. Um, mm. just with the Russia alone, but then you also have like the state of the uh the Persian states in uh the Soviet Union and mm. uh, in Central Asia and like the massively varying different cultures and a lot of places varying groups of people that uh, that live in those spaces and mm. Ukraine as well is incredibly ethnically diverse, mm. um historically speaking and today as well and it's the that's the kind of situation where also we have to understand that there's these kind of drastic relations that persist. Um, there's groups that um, exist in mannerisms where there isn't a feasible way to create um, like control over a piece of land, but have them have some autonomy within someone else's like uh, existing land. Yeah. Yeah. In civil society, civil society has to become a concept that is nurtured and civil society is something that has to become independent in a revolution. Independent to a point where even land of the state. No longer property. Yeah, it's no longer you know there can't be you know private property you know that's the the, the you know no, and, and private, private property, property only became sort of I mean, you know like liberalized you know when it was considered to be the property of the state like in in I the Zionist state you know they consider all the property to belonging to the state and they only rent it you know to the local Israelis you know for ninety nine years or something you know 
Yeah, that's the lease system. They do that here with the with the housing associations that are just charities, but they're actually like fucking private landlords with extra steps that do social housing. But the uh. what's it? Um, what I would get at is that with like uh with the stage of socialism, one of the things it does have a problem of is being a representative government in that stage, at least in the lower phase of it. That situation puts them in a case where a form of property still exists and that is a remnant that needs to be squashed and so there is that kind of situation where it's not just about private property it's like property in general like the oh, land yes. stops being uh, this property thing it stops being yeah. this bordered thing um yeah. you know especially like we get into like uh, you know like what you get through with your uh concept of the palestinian and hebrew nations is sort of the like intricacies that go into like integration like you know how does one approach integrating into uh, a land that they have a mm. historical tie to but they don't mm -hmm. have a familiar tie to yeah like and they're engaging with the 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 locals of the land that have a cultural relationship to them you yeah. know that the really important part of understanding that a part of like jewish people's culture is palestinian culture is mm. a really important step for building that relationship. Palestinians have, it, it, even a lot of Palestinians that don't consider themselves Jewish have Jewish ancestry. Uh, mm. Jewish, Canaanite, Arab, and yeah. um, uh, Mesopotamian, a few other groups, uh, uh, Greeks as well. Palestine mm. has always been a very, very ethnically diverse place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Africans, as black Africans as well. Oh, yes. Fuck me. I, yeah. I would fucking forget to mention that. Yeah, yeah. Africans have yeah. been in Palestine for fucking... There's an underrepresentation of black Africans, even though black Africans played a major role in the development, you know, of the uh, Western Asian uh, countries there, because yeah. there was 12 million slaves brought from Africa to the, uh, to the Islamic uh, caliphates there, you know, like uh, most likely Sunni rather than Shia, you know. The aristocratic, you know, like a Muslim, you know, like a, a caliphate, you know, like used to slavery a great deal. But in order to maintain their social cohesion and domination, they would castrate all their slaves. So there you could know, not that's... be any propagation. Yeah. But wow. yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, that slave trade um, in some form of another managed to survive until the 1970s. The British wow. must have been keeping them in business. That's the only way I could see that they're still getting sales. I mean, that, that's a joke. I know there's other people that buy slaves, but this it's the British. You know they're doing something with slavery somewhere. Mm. It's stinky mm. little <laughs> Yeah, that was the British uh, uh, triangular trade system, you know, that made the wealth of the British Empire in the West. Well, and then there was it, on yeah, top of that, India being between, looted. They had one between India. Um, was, was, were they shipping from Ethiopia? I can't remember where they were shipping from. It was somewhere in that region, and they would ship from there into India, and then uh -huh. they would uh, ship back. Uh -huh. um, oh, I'm trying to think, because I don't know if they ship back to the same place or if they go somewhere else, because it's usually the case. Is there's usually like three major... Well, they say three major destinations, but they stop in the Caribbean and then go visit the Americas. It's more like a weird rhombus. Uh, mm. the, but if you called it the... the uh, the transatlantic slave rhombus that would sound um it sounds terrifying actually yeah um hmm. it, it is a triangle like the general shape of it is a triangle but i just and, the, and the existence that, of cuba makes it like slightly yeah. a rhombus just a tiny bit but usually what's not sort of included in the analysis you know the uh, schemas of the tr slave trade and the political economy of the sl slave trade is that it originates with one african state or monarch enslaving its neighboring African residents, civilians, and selling them to the imperial powers, you know. It was the so Africans it. themselves, you know, who initiated, you know, the sale of the slaves, you know, to the um, Europeans. Well, what's it? That was the thing, though, is that happened in a lot of cases, but it also ha didn't happen in a hell of a lot of cases, too. And a lot of white people kind of use that one as a way to get away with it when, uh, you know, the concept of blackness was something that was specifically created through slavery. So mm -hmm. those oppressors, uh, in the case where they've got so like salty deals with them and all that, like they're acting waiting in a specifically African cultural oppressive way that has come from their development of class societal culture. And people kind of point this into the uh, arguments of race. Race being a bullshit concept anyway, but yeah. uh, it was something that was in its um, infancy 
still when this stuff well i'd say mid uh, mid adolescence um sorry mid lessons adolescence i know how age works but uh, fucking um uh it's all these phantom words that you hear fucking loads of people using fucking but it, it's in it was in its adolescence it was developing into the more advanced uh you know slave shipping uh world domineering and uh, you know what would eventually develop the proletariat i think people miss chattel slavery's actual like involvement in creating mm. the socialized and unified workforce mm -hmm. um and what's it the um uh you know uh, what's it um and that's not to say that they were like allowing people good socialization or anything i don't want that to be misinterpreted by fucking like white folk but the point is, is that the way that they slam people together and these people are in tight struggle trying to protect their culture, trying to protect their mm. lives, that and the work that they were forced to do in building and creating the whole of like the shit slave America had for the longest of fucking time. And they still are the poorest of workers is mm. that, you know, that aspect of being the center point of what made society tick is what the proletariat has become with the bourgeoisie and what they've created. And so like, we are a progenesis uh, from both serfdom, uh, the end of the handicraftsman and the beginning of socialized labor and the torturous enslavement of peoples. <laughs> I come from Irish heritage and ass fucking serfdom slavery, a nation of serfs, which is not the same as fucking chattel slavery but in solidarity mm. with my fucking enslaved brethren there is that fucking history of not being your nation you are nothing but a slave nation to them you get considered black mm. and the a british used the n-word for us plenty and uh like we're talking like early like use of it for slaves in general so that uh. would be before colorism was invented colorism was invented mm. in america it's a thing people don't know mm. and um like uh the concepts of whiteness and blackness were actually more centered around holiness i mean it was originally land ownership it was actually the whitman uh which means wheat man uh owner mm. of wheat land uh mm. or landlord as some people might lovely know lo lovingly know them as and so in this relationship we got going on here the um uh, the the fucking concept of blackness as um uh, uh cedric robinson talks about in his book of marxism started with the oppression of the uh the colonized in europe this is where these concepts started to sprout and then they were advanced upon into even worse concepts when they started to oppress the african people and so uh like the concept of blackness was uh was uh, shrewded through this idea of purity and purity and it was just, like very culturally focused but it became very mm. biological over time as well which comes from eugenics which is an old greek mm. philosophical concept that mm. i think comes from plato i might be wrong on that <laughs> but it is something that has evolved a lot over time and has constantly crept out of the woodwork every time ethnicism or it's more advanced and like fucking even worse fucking cousin racism um like uh, come out uh, and like fucking play which they have been a, a fucking force for or class oppression for longer than capitalism is well uh specifically ethnicism is longer than capitalism existed racism you could say pro-racism existed before but i agree with the position a lot of people say that racism yeah. developed in the part of feudalism pushing into capitalism and its developments of capitalism and the need to justify uh, the development into capitalists land owning philosophy of private property, uh, the, the, you know, the capital, who can, the guy who can own the most capital rather than the guy who has a religious control over the laws of the land. Um, and so this is a framework where Cedric Robinson talks about how racism was a very core part of how they built this philosophy mm -hmm. and how they centered it on it but it wasn't a deterministic one, it was a directed one. And so what we see is that kind of mindset and stuff. But uh, what I was saying as well with the Irish, um, when the colorism came in, they just racked oid on the end of it, by the way. That that was their solution um, to the colorism conflict of, well, people are going to see that the Irish look kind of white if we're going from the colorism aspect. So they put oid on it. And oid in uh, lexicon means to be akin to or like mm -hmm. a thing similar to usually akin to like my name language. my name is weisfeld which means white field 
<laughs> Long same you, thing. you, you, Yeah, it's Feinstein the same thing. admits he's white on stream. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> or Wheatfield. Uh, oh, well, that's the name ascribed to us, you know, but it's not the original name. <laughs> Yeah, no, I understand. but, uh, you know, the discussion about slavery has, has reminded me, you know, that my aunt was a slave. I'm not talking, you know, like I'm talking about slavery, you know, in my family. You know, Yeah. my, my aunt Mm -hmm. was a slave, you know, she was, you know, taken out of a concentration camp, you know, where she was a good worker. And strong, and so she was put into you know a German factory in Germany making munitions, you know, for the Nazi army. She was working inside, you know, the factory for years, you know, as a slave, and she survived as a result. And she was one of the first, you know, refugees. In fact, she was the first refugee to step into Canada after the war, and there was a photograph of her in the newspaper and that sort of thing, you know. And she was a slave, and so that leads me to the conclusion that's an argument, you know, that shows the fallacy. of the racism argument in the first place, you know, if it's based itself upon a biological argument that certain human, you know, a, a species <laughs> are inferior to other human species, even though they're the same species, because, you know, they have certain biological characteristics that are different than the others, you know, the other, you know, members of the same species. So if they're inferior biologically, you know, because they are colored, then how come they also justify the slavery of my aunt who was, you know, Is European, you know, as any other European. In fact, you know, uh, you know, like, uh, where's the logic, you know, in racism, you know, when they defy, when they contradict themselves, you know, by again, putting Europeans into slavery, you know, like my aunt. So this Think about proves, it as you well. know, the fallacy of racism in and of itself. Think about it as well. They've gone and now made, you know, uh, a blackness around an entire continent. Africa is considered uh, black. That is the denotion for it. Or they'll even think of Africa as a nation. There's a lot of people in Europe who actually believe Africa is a country, Uh, not or a continent. or it's called the jungle, the jungle. What is that? Str Oh, my Strasbourg, God. you know, whoever said, called it the jungle. The rest of the world is the jungle, you know, because he's learned, you know, that word from Africa. So the rest Oh, of the world God, is like you Africa know what? and needs to be treated as such. There's, there's fucking, um, what's it? Um, Joe Biden said that, uh, like, to, I think it was to his wife or something, but he went on about how he doesn't want his kids to grow up in, like, a racist jungle. No, uh, was there a racist? No, racial jungle, sorry. Racial jungle, Oh, sorry. racial. Oh, I was about that's to say, a bit I almost made better. him, I almost made him sound, I almost made him sound cool then, like, what the fuck? I, I, I'm not being paid by Biden, I swear. But the, uh, <laughs> oh, God, no, the fucking MRN law are going to run with that one, aren't they? <laughs> but once it, you know, I think colorism is such bullshit because they're targeting us all the time. You know, it was like that talk I was on about um uh when um I went on about how like you know the Angloids you know the they will call me a gypsy if they know my heritage you know that that's not an uncommon thing. Fortunately, a lot more younger people aren't so quick to be like that. But you deal with any of the mids and the olds, oh boy, <laughs> and so. Like that situation is one of those things where it's like, okay, you can look like you fit in and maybe they won't spot you at first. As soon as they do find something, Oh, yeah, they'll find some little they're fucking thing on or to other, you, you know. They'll target people that aren't Jewish and start accusing them of being Jewish because um, they'll start facial feature analyzing. Um, like Hitler wrote down that like Stalin was, was, uh, had Aryan ears. So he might be, uh, he might be negotiable. Um, He's one of the twenty percent, I guess. Like he got his ticket. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Okay. Okay. Well, that's it for today. We went on, you know, there's so much to talk about and it's uh, enjoyable to speak with you both. Thanking uh, Absolutely. you very much for your contributions. Sorry, I've been a bit tense at certain parts of this, but this convergence is always beautiful. And me and you can go at it pretty heavy sometimes, you know. Of course. <laughs> What's it? Ruthless criticism must adorn ruthless self-criticism. So I, I do feel like I could have tempered myself a little better, but it's been beautiful having this session, Yes, yes, as yes, always. yes, 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 as always. Love and solidarity, comrades. Oh, yeah.